Hello, and welcome to ChemLab. For the next few minutes, we will be talking about laboratory safety to ensure your safety and the safety of those people working around you before coming to lab. Be sure to read the procedure and theory sections of the experiment. This way, you will have a better understanding of what is taking place during the lab and will be able to work quickly and efficiently. Write down all important materials pertaining to the experiment that you will be performing. Write down the physical properties of the materials being used, the safety information of any hazardous materials, the procedure, and anything else you feel is relevant to your work. Make sure to get something to eat or drink before coming to lab. Oftentimes, experiments take several hours and no food or drinks are allowed in the lab. Contamination can go both ways. Make sure you wear appropriate clothing to lab. Do not wear your favorite or expensive clothes to the lab. They may be damaged by highly corrosive chemicals, stained by dyes, or strong oxidizing agents. All students must wear closed-toed shoes that cover their entire foot. Pants that cover their entire leg are also required. This is a common area left exposed by students. So make sure that you are wearing appropriate clothing that does not leave the skin at your ankles exposed. T-shirts are recommended for lab, but long sleeve shirts are okay. Your sleeves may need to be rolled up at times though. Tank tops are not allowed. Your shirt must be long enough to cover your midsection at all times, and anyone with long hair is required to pull their hair back into a ponytail while they are in the lab. Safety glasses are the most important piece of safety equipment that you are required to provide. Students are required to be wearing their safety glasses at all times in the lab. There are no exceptions. If you wear corrective lenses, it is preferred that you wear glasses rather than contacts to lab. But contacts are acceptable. If something does get into your eye, glasses are much easier to remove than contacts and your eye can be washed at the eye wash station much sooner. This will help reduce the damage to your eye. Nonetheless, you should be wearing your safety glasses at all times. If you are wearing inappropriate attire to lab, you will be asked to go home and change or you will not be allowed to participate in the lab that day. Arriving at lab. Make sure your instructor is in the lab before you enter. Place any bags, backpacks, or coats off to the side along the walls or in the appropriate spot that has been designated for these things. This is to prevent people from tripping over them and causing an accident. Hazard signs. It is important to be able to read caution and warning signs on all chemicals used in lab. If a container is not labeled, do not assume what it is. The results of using an unmarked container can be deadly, so never assume anything. This is the most common safety label. The blue, red, and yellow diamonds are then rated on a scale of 0 to 4. For the blue diamond, 0, the material is normal. 1, the material is slightly hazardous. 2, the material is hazardous. 3, the material is extremely hazardous, and four, the material can be deadly. For the red diamond, zero, the material will not burn. One, the material will burn above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Two, above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but not exceeding 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Three, below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Four, below 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The yellow diamond, zero, the material is stable. One, the material is unstable if heated. Two, the material might undergo a violent chemical change. 3. Shock or heat may detonate. 4. The material may detonate. The white diamond has its own unique symbols that mean certain things and is not on a scale from 1 to 0. OX stands for oxidizer. Acid stands for acid. ALK stands for alkali. CRO stands for corrosive. And a W with a line through it stands for use no water and the radioactive symbol indicates radioactivity. Chemicals may also be rated by their reactivity, toxicity, flammability, and corrosiveness by the GHC pictograms. These pictograms display pictures representing the type of chemical hazards present. Emergencies. In the case of severe weather, follow your professor's or teaching assistant's instructions. When asked to leave, do so quickly and go to the appropriate staging area. Remember to stay away from any windows. When the fire alarm goes off or when instructed by a professor or teaching assistant, leave the building in an orderly manner. Assemble in the designated area outside. Safety equipment and operation. The fire extinguisher. First, go get the fire extinguisher from the wall. It is most likely close to the door that you entered through, but make sure you know where it is because every lab is different. Once you have retrieved it, pull out the pin and push down on the lever while aiming the nozzle at the fire. The eye wash station. If you get something in your eye, Quickly move to the eye wash station. Remove any glasses or contacts you may be wearing. Take off the caps, push down on the lever, and wash your eyes for 5 to 15 minutes. You may need to hold your eyes open to let the water in. The safety shower. 
In the event that a large amount of chemicals have been spilled on you, move quickly to the safety shower. Pull down on the chain or lever. Take your clothes off. You may have been hurt badly in the accident, so you may need help getting undressed. Have someone assist you. Then wash for 15 minutes. Accident Procedures For a minor accident, go to the student health center or local health facility. Go with an escort. Take your lab notebook with you. This will help the doctors determine the best course of treatment for you because you should have written down all the safety information before coming to lab. For a major accident or emergency, dial 911. If you do not have a phone on you, there will be a red phone located in the hallway. This will get you to a university operator and they will contact emergency services for you. A chemical accident. If a small amount is spilled on your skin, go to the sink and wash it with a lot of water, then check for swelling or redness. If a large amount is spilled on you, then go to the safety shower. Take off your clothes and wash for 15 minutes. If something gets in your eyes, remove any contacts or glasses you may be wearing and flush your eyes for 5 to 15 minutes. Spills. If there is a spill on the countertop, clean it up with a wet sponge or paper towel. For a large spill, alert others around you, then immediately get your professor or teaching assistant. Thermal burns. While working in the lab, you may be working with many hot objects, so be careful to not burn yourself. A first degree burn. A first degree burn affects the outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, causing pain and redness. A second degree burn. A second degree burn extends down into the second layer of skin, the dermis, causing pain, redness, and blisters that may ooze. Third degree burn. A third degree burn involves both layers of skin. There may also be damage to muscle, bone, or tendons under the burnt area. The burnt site appears charred, pale, or leathery. There is usually no pain involved with the third degree burn because the nerve endings have been destroyed. How to treat a burn. Hold the burned area under cold water for at least 15 minutes or until the pain subsides. The cold water will reduce the swelling and takes the heat away from the skin. If the burn is bad, loosely wrap the burned area in sterile gauze. This will keep the air from getting to the site of the burn and helps protect blistered skin. Take an over-the-counter pain reliever to reduce the pain. Remember to take only the recommended amount. Then seek medical attention if the burn is bad. Cuts, scrapes, and abrasions. Most small cuts will stop bleeding on their own. If it is not a small cut, rinse the area with clean water. Make sure to remove any dirt or debris from the cut. If you have to, dip a pair of tweezers into alcohol to sterilize them and then remove any foreign objects. Next, apply an antibiotic to help prevent the chance of infection. Cover the wound with a sterile bandage. Make sure to change the dressing at least once a day or whenever it becomes dirty or wet. If the wound is a quarter inch deep or six millimeters deep, or you see any muscle or fat protruding, you will need to get stitches. Then over the next few days while the wound is healing, make sure to watch for signs of infection. Many of these injuries may be minor enough to treat in the lab. There is a first aid kit located in each of the balance rooms. Reacting to a fire. In a chemistry lab, you never want to use water on a fire. It could just spread or fuel the fire more. The best bet is to smother it. If there is a small fire, try and cover it with a beaker to cut off its supply of oxygen. The other way is to use a CO2 fire extinguisher. This saturates the area with CO2 and the fire doesn't have any more oxygen to fuel it. If there is a fire, alert your professor or teaching assistant immediately. Disposal of used chemicals. For used acids and bases, there should be both a used acid and used base container located in the acid base hood. For used organic materials, put them in the used organic container. When cleaning your glassware with acetone, make sure to put the acetone you used in the used acetone container. Sometimes there will be special containers for special reagents, for example, chromium or permanganates. Once you're finished using these reagents, put them in these special containers. If you are ever unsure on how to properly dispose of a chemical, ask your instructor. Glassware. Before starting the experiment, look over your glassware and check for any stars or cracks. This will reduce the chance of anything breaking and causing an accident. While in the check-in process, look for any broken equipment and get it replaced then. You may be charged for any broken equipment from then on. If a piece of glassware is broken, collect all the pieces and then put them into the broken glass container. Also put any disposable glassware in this container after you have used it. Working with labware. Melt temps. They are used to measure the melting point so they generate a lot of heat to melt the crystals being measured. They are very hot, so make sure to not burn your nose when looking through the eyepiece. When you're done with the melt temp, make sure to not wrap the wires around the hot areas. You will melt the wires. Heating mantle. This is used to heat organic liquids. Plug it into the heating triac. If it doesn't work, 
check the fuse. A heating and stirring plate. Do not use this to directly heat an organic liquid. Many are flammable and volatile. Only use these to heat hot water baths. Wearing gloves. Wear gloves whenever instructed to do so or working with dangerous compounds. Do not wear gloves while working with dichloromethane. It will go through the glove and the heat from your body will cause it to evaporate and the glove will hold it in and you will be burned. Clean your glassware thoroughly after each experiment. It will give better results for your next experiment. Clean up your workbench when you are finished. You are not the only one using that area, so be courteous to others. Clean up the balance area after you are finished. Always remember to be safe while working in lab, and remember to have a good attitude. <laughs>